What's up, folks? Welcome. Um, obviously, we don't have a show tonight, the Chad Prather Show. Get this adjusted a little bit. Get rid of some text messages. Bam! There we are. What's going on? Uh, good to see you guys. Of course, can't see you, but I see your little names popping up over here on the side. Uh, let's talk about it and get after it. I'll give you guys a little update of what's going on. Uh, we did not do the uh, episode of the Chad Prather Show tonight because uh, we had inclement weather and there were a lot of wrecks and there was a lot of ice on the street. The bridges were iced over in a lot of places and so a lot of our directors could not make it into the studio. So I said, you know what? No sense in risking our lives. We will just hang out with you guys on a live feed video. I wish there was more light. Let me see. Nope, that's the garbage disposal. There's a little more light right there. Not a whole lot, but it'll help. Uh, anyway, I will try to see if I can read some of your comments. And uh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for um, voting for me. I appreciate that. I'm reading the sentiments that are going up. And uh, thank you very much for your support. Um, I am currently pissed off at KWTX, which is a um, one of the uh, news organizations in the state of Texas who just released an article saying that the most vocal opponents of Greg Abbott are um, my primary opponents. They didn't even mention me. Uh, I don't know how much more vocal I can be. I have made a living being vocal. I have been at every single, um, with the exception of maybe one, I've been to every candidate, legitimate candidate forum that they've been to. I even talked to KWTX. I don't know why I wasted my time interviewing with them. Why is it that these news organizations actually campaign, campaign for other candidates as though they're the only ones running? Not even an honorable mention in this thing, but hey, you know what? We knew that this was going to be an uphill fight. We knew that to fight for the spirit of Texas was going to be a spiritual battle. Now, I'm going to tell you what's going on with me and the ban and the shutdown and the Facebook jail. I'm going to tell you all that stuff because I got emails. I got stuff that's coming. I'm going to tell you everything I got here in a little bit. But the reason I say this is a spiritual battle is because, let me tell you, God has been working in the events of human history. He has worked providentially throughout our history to bring us to this point both as Americans as well as Texans, we have seen actively how God's hand has worked to bring us here. And now we have this big government institution, both on the federal and the state level, that wants to rule over us and we bow down to it because we become so dependent on it. So dependent on it. The government was never created or designed in America for you to depend on it. That's not what it was there for. It is there to protect your freedoms and to make sure in case of an invasion or something of that nature that you are protected. Folks, the Constitution was not written to keep you healthy. The Constitution was not written to keep you uh, uh, safe. The Constitution wasn't written to keep you happy. The Constitution wasn't written to give you warm fuzzies. The Constitution was written to keep you free, period. And... Uh, the thing about free people is they're, uh, they're hard to control, and that's what we're seeing up in Canada. That's what we're seeing in our own United States. Free people are hard to control. But spiritually speaking, the most liberated folks are the ones who are the most powerful. That's the nature of renewal, of revival, right? You, you get a person that's in bondage and you set them free, they're the happiest people. They're the greatest evangelists, right? They're the ones who tell the news. They go out there and they shout it from the rooftops. They talk about what set them free. And right now, we're in bondage, folks. Look at all the tyranny that we're under. You've heard me say this over and over again. Judicial tyranny, bureaucratic tyranny on the federal and the state level, educational tyranny. We're under medical tyranny. We're under corporate tyranny. Uh, educational, I, did I say I said educational. Um, on down the list, this stuff goes, and we are just we are just being trampled on, folks. So we got to get people set free, and the only way to do that is get government, this government, out of our lives, get the right government back in place. As my hero Sam Houston said, govern wisely and as little as possible. As little as possible. As little as possible. That's what I want you to get to. So um, here's what's happening. So a lot of people have come to me, and they said, you know, this Facebook ban's probably going to play in your favor because... 
uh, it's bringing you a lot of attention. And it has. It's good for about a day or two, right? Um, and uh, a lot of people talking about it, a lot of people sharing our story. You know, the most powerful thing you can do is share somebody else's story. And so I'm thankful and humbled people who do that. I did a campaign event last night in Royce City, Texas, uh, out there outside of Rockwall. And someone suggested, she said at the end of my talk, she said, what if we all went together and uh, we all, everybody in the room went live on our Facebook pages right now for you to talk. And that was one of the, like that gave me pause. Like that kind of took my breath away there for a second. Like that literally stopped me in my tracks because it was such a humble but powerful gesture that somebody was willing to give me their platform to share my political views and to push a campaign. Uh, I, I almost teared up. I ain't gonna lie to you. I ain't gonna lie to you. I almost teared up over it. But uh, imagine you're living in, say, 1880, 1890, and they're running the telegraph wire through Texas, and they say, we're not going to run it to your town because, uh, well, quite honestly, we don't like your religious beliefs, or we don't like your political beliefs, so we're going to skip your town. The telegraph's not coming to XYZville, wherever you live. You would think the federal government or the government would do something about that. Let's say the telephone lines, it's 1930 and they're running telephone lines through. And they say, hey, you know, why aren't you running telephone lines through our town? And they say, well, we don't like your political views. So we're not going to let you talk. We're going to keep telephones from you. So welcome to the 21st century. This is, this is what common carriage is all about, okay? You can go back and look up common carriage. Common carriage made sure that the telegraph lines and the telephone lines weren't going to be exempted in other cities because of certain reasons. Uh, of discrimination. So that way they could not, and the law says they could not uh, basically discriminate them from social and economic means by keeping their means of communication away from them. Enter social media. Social media is now shutting down the platforms of people they don't agree with. Even YouTube, we're sitting here on YouTube, they said anything that's harmful language, we're going to start censoring. Uh, and that's my paraphrase, but we talked about it on yesterday's show. So what, who, who uh, objectively, who objectively determines what's harmful speech? Now, I got put in Facebook jail because I told someone who, who spams my page a lot, who likes to attack conservatives, and she was consistently saying, you guys need to look at the documents and see that January 6th was an insurrection. And so I commented back, and I said, in my ever so abrasive way, I said, why don't you go and look at the documents that the FBI has filed saying that they do not define it as an insurrection. And I said, let's just be unbiased here. Let's look at the facts. That is what got me banned. That's what got me banned. This was a number of months ago, and they went and pulled it up on Monday. I was banned 7 o'clock uh, Monday morning, banned from Facebook, seven-day ban, eight days out from the primary election, which is March 1st. They silenced my campaign on Facebook. All right, Facebook is my largest platform. It represents millions of people, millions of people in reach. So they shut me down. So this is illegal. Uh, this is uh, interference. Uh, and this is absolutely um, a travesty to the political process, free and fair elections. So I emailed my business rep with email, uh, Facebook and she emailed me back and she said, here's what she said, listen closely. She said, we're going to turn this over to the, my colleagues who, ha who can handle your governor campaign. Now, I didn't say anything about a campaign. I just said, I want you to review this shutdown, this, this ban. I want you to review it because nothing was wrong in what I said. Nothing was wrong. I didn't say anything about a governor campaign. Why did they jump to that conclusion? How did Facebook know to jump to that conclusion about a governor campaign? Why, is this, why was this ever about a governor campaign? Because it wasn't. And so one of her colleagues emailed me back that afternoon, yesterday afternoon, and said, uh, I'm going to take a look at this. We'll have to circle back. Circle back. Now, does that sound familiar at all? They're going to circle back. Somebody's been watching some presidential press conference, some White House press conferences, right? Yeah. So the evidence is there, folks. The evidence is there. Um. We know that this is a targeted thing, especially when Greg Abbott, the governor of Texas, is the number two subsidizer of Facebook in the nation so that Facebook will do business in Texas. He subsidizes them, brings them here. They, he's, they're in bed together, man. They're in bed together, and I'm telling you, they don't want free and fair elections. 
Why did this administration reduce election meddling down to a misdemeanor from a felony? Why? Because this administration are the ones who are meddling. That's why. Tell me this. Why are they sending out emails seven days before the election starts in the early voting for, for training for campaign poll workers and campaign watchers, and they can't even find the video for the training to get certified, and when they do, it's glitchy and it kicks back usernames and passwords. Tell me why that's happening in the state of Texas if they want free and fair elections, because the ones who are in power, and it ain't Democrats, it ain't Republicans, it is the rhinos, and just like my buddy uh, Weston Martinez is running for land commissioner, says there ain't, there's two types of people in America today. Two types of people in America today. And they're not Republicans and Democrats. They're patriots and traitors. Patriots and traitors, folks. And it's time to get pretty damn fired up about this. March 1st is primary day. A lot of you have already engaged in early voting. A lot of you have told me that you voted for me. Thank you very much. I want the job. I've been saying all along. I've been saying all along. Nobody should want this job. Nobody should want this job because either if you say you want it, you either don't know what it entails or you're psychotic. Well, I want the job. You know why? Because I'm effing psychotic at this point. I am ready to go in there and roll heads. You thought I was motivated before. No, I'm ready to take some ball breakers to Austin, Texas. And we're about to drive that swamp out. Let me tell you, it is time to cut some heads and roll them down Congress Avenue. Listen, we got a problem, Texas. We got a problem. It is time to do something about this. We, we, have gone, we have gotten such a bloated, overblown, dictatorial, unilateral, decision-making, legislative, sidestepping government in Austin, Texas. It is a blob that rolls through and consumes everything it touches. It takes from you. It takes your money. It takes your rights. It takes your life. It takes your property. Everything. They are modifying your children's genitals. They're letting biological males compete with biological females. That's not illegal in the state of Texas. Look at what they're doing. You think we're free? We're not free, folks. We're being, we're being laughed at by these politicians in Austin, Texas. It's time for us to make a difference. We've seen an increase of spending 19% in the last seven years since Greg Abbott's been in office. Only a population growth of 5.4%. You carry that out another term of him, and let me tell you, we're going to look just like California. Just like California. And here's the thing. Greg Abbott wanted to run for president. He can't do that now because three roadblocks got in his way. You know what they were? Donald Trump, coronavirus, and Ron DeSantis. So guess what he's going to do? He's going to keep his ass in power in Texas as long as he can because there's no term limits. You want to watch a dictator in action? Watch what Greg Abbott's about to do to Texas. He wins this election, and you will never be rid of Greg Abbott. You'll never get rid of him. He'll be here forever. He's already been there 30 years living on the government tit. The state's paying him 30 years. That's getting close to Joe Biden numbers. We keep putting these political career politicians in office. I don't care if it's Mitch McConnell, Lindsey Graham, Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, Joe Biden. We keep putting them in office over and over again. There's no term limits in the state of Texas, folks. They've all got to go. They've all got to go. They've all got to go. Get rid of them. There's maybe three people in Austin, Texas I trust. Maybe three. Property taxes in the state of Texas is the most immoral tax there is, property tax. Property taxes in the metropolitan areas of Texas, we are now number one in the nation. Number one! That's how much money you're spending. You never own your land, you never own your home. Never. Never. We're number sixth overall in the state. As a state, we're number six overall in the nation. I'm, I'm pretty ticked off, you can tell. I wasn't going to be ticked off. I was going to be all calm. But the more I got to thinking about this thing, I just got ticked off. Because I love Texas. I love the state of Texas. I am in this race for the right reasons. I laid aside career. I laid aside money. I laid aside income. I laid aside relationships. Let me tell you, to fight for the spirit of Texas. We are not a zip code. We are not an area code. We are not a line on a map. We are a spirit. And that spirit of Texas is under attack, folks. I want you to catch it. I want you to have it. I want you to own it. I want you to give it away. I want you to love it. I want you to love freedom. I want you to love Texas freedom. For some reason, God brought me to Texas 21 years ago. Now, I was conceived in Dallas, all right? So I got Texas DNA. As a pro-life guy that believes life begins at fertilization and conception, let me tell you, I'm a pro-life guy. I was conceived in Dallas. I got Texas DNA. 
But God brought me to Texas. Let me tell you what happened. I'm going to tell you this story. Some of you have never heard it. I was in Fort Worth, Texas on a business trip. It was a Wednesday afternoon. I was in a hotel downtown. I stepped out on the street and I heard music down the street. Fort Worth, Texas. And I walked down the street. Wednesday night, live music. You know the concert series that was going on. Those of you around Fort Worth, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It was down at the old 8-0. It's now the Flying Saucer. And out there under that canopy, sitting out there, there was hundreds of people listening to live music. I don't remember who was playing. I probably know them personally now, but I don't, I don't remember now who was playing because I had no point of contact there. I had no way to, to connect it. And I looked around at those people. And I knew who I was. I knew what I came out of. And I, I knew the things that I love in my life. And let me tell you something. I heard a harmonic resonance. Something started beating in my heart. Sitting there watching those people in Texas. And something spoke inside of me and said, these are your people. These are your people. Six months later, my truck was packed up and I moved to Texas. I haven't looked back. I've had things that... Issues in life, situations, circumstances that have taken me out of Texas for a small period of time. I come right back. You know why? Because these are my people. This is my DNA. This is my tribe. Texas is my tribe. I don't care who you are, where you came from, or where you live in the state of Texas. If you got the spirit of Texas in you and on you, you're my people. That spirit of Davy Crockett who says, you know what? You all can go to hell. I'm going to Texas. A spirit of Sam Houston that says that Texas has never known oppression. But we're on the verge of it, folks. We're on the verge of it. I'm in this race because I love you. They're silencing me. We may never know. I've been on, I've been on the phone with a lot of people, a lot of lawyers, a lot of high ups in the state, a lot of elected officials. We've been talking about this thing. Because if they could do it to me, they could do it to all of us. Because let me tell you, just like Donald Trump said, Donald Trump said they weren't after him, they were after you. He was just standing in the way. Folks, they're coming after me because I'm an outsider. They don't, you say, oh, well, you don't have a chance. I got a chance to disrupt that effing system, I tell you that. And I'm going to disrupt it. I'm going to make their lives a living hell, and I don't have to be in office to do it. I want you to look at me when I tell you. I will never look away from state politics in the state of Texas because it is garbage. And we're going to turn this porta potty upside down and drain it till it's dry. We're going to rinse it out and repeat and we're going to make sure that the people who are operating in this state have the priorities of the people of Texas as the number one beat of their heart. Or we're going to deal with them. We're going to deal with them. They will fear the people of Texas because the power is in the people. It's not in those people you elected and gave some delegated representative authority to. It will not be with them. Those days are over. And I don't have to be in office. Let me tell you something. I will lead the biggest freaking army that you've ever seen. Army of free citizens. People who love this state who love freedom, and we will be the biggest burr in your saddle. And I tell you what, we'll do it legislatively. We'll make sure that the only people that ever get elected to the House or the Senate in the state of Texas are 100% true by God Texas patriots that love the republic and are willing to sacrifice everything for our sovereignty and our freedom. Try me. Test me. I'm telling you, they have unleashed a beast inside of me. I promise you, I will never look away from what I've seen. It is slimy, it is seedy, it is gross, it's disgusting. All of these lobbyists, this pay for play, these overreaching bureaucrats that got their greedy hands in your pockets, in your pocketbooks, let me tell you, we're going to get rid of them. We're going to deal with them. We're going to roll some heads. It doesn't matter at this stage in the game. What happens on the 1st of March? It may be politics as usual. I did an interview today on Real America's Voice, I think it was. And in the intro, he said... The polls say that Greg Abbott is standing solidly on firm ground to be reelected and he's not threatened by any opponents. And I said, let me tell you something, buddy. He ain't standing on firm ground. I have yet to find a true grassroots conservative who's happy with Greg Abbott. They don't like his California ways. Three weeks ago, the man was down there fundraising in Southern California. Look at what's going on, folks. You think California's not coming to Texas? Texas has been sold out. Their soul has been sold to the devil, but I don't believe it. I believe that Texas can be redeemed. Texas can be brought back, folks. We're not number one in any single category. Not in, every, not in one single category, not a single thing, except property tax for metropolitan areas. 38th in spending. High 30s, low 40s in education, health care, and opportunity. We got illegals coming across the border. We're incentivizing an open border with health care and welfare and housing and education. 
We got members of the Chinese Communist Party sitting their asses in our college campus classrooms. And they're owning hundreds of thousands of acres of land with wind farms that they're being used to spy on our own Air Force bases right here outside of Del Rio, Texas. You think I'm not pissed off? I am pissed off, folks. I am pissed off. And let me tell you, I know there's about 25 other states across the union that are pissed off too. And there's a lot of patriots out there. You hear exactly what I'm saying. You know this is from my heart. You can shut me down. You can ban me. You can demonetize me, deplatform me. But I believe there's an army of patriots out there who are sick of the traitorous ways of the people we voted for. And do not go into those polls thinking I'm going to vote for the guy who can win. That is a pussy ass way of looking at an election. Forgive me. Forgive me. But that's a pussy ass way of looking at it. You go in there and you vote for the person that you know is going to fight for the spirit of Texas. You fight for the person who's going to make government small again. Get government out of your life and fight for your priorities and values. That's what you do. You don't do based on who can win. You know what that mindset gets you? It gets you Mitch McConnell. It gets you Lindsey Graham. It gets you Joe Biden. That's what it gets you. It gets you the John McCains of the world. That's what it gets you. It gets you the Bush family. It gets you the Clintons. Well, we know it can win. We got O'Rourke. He's going to be running over there. Screw O'Rourke. Screw O'Rourke. He can't stand on his own two feet politically. He's lost nonstop. Let me tell you something. They can throw all the money they want at us, but I tell you what, he doesn't possess the spirit of Texas. I'll preach all night long on this because it is my passion. It is my heart. It is my soul, and I will fight for you. I will fight for you because let me tell you something. I care about this state. I love it. I love this state. I've been all the way across it. I was in McCamey, Texas just last week. It ain't the ends of the earth, but by God, you can see it from there. And I told those patriots out there in McCamey, Texas, that we're going to make sure that their voice out there in that county, Upton County, they're going to have as much say in Austin, Texas, as Dallas County or Harris County, which is Houston. We're going to make sure that places like that, I was in Hunt County last night, in Rockwall County last night as well. And let me tell you, those small counties, guess what? They're going to have just as much say as Dallas and Harris County. Just as much as Bear County in San Antonio. Just as much as Tarrant County in Fort Worth. Just as much as Travis County in Austin. That's exactly what they're going to have. They're going to have a voice. We're going to make sure they do because their priorities are what matters. So I appreciate your prayers. I appreciate your prayers. You say, how can we donate? Donate your prayers. That's what I want. You want to go to praythrough2022.com, lay your hands on the screen and pray for it, folks. While we have in revival, let's go ahead and set it all free. Pray for protection. Pray for grace. Pray for wisdom. I've learned so much in the last 18 months, some of it good, some of it bad. But I'm more invigorated for this fight than I've ever been. I love you, folks. I want you to catch that spirit of those Alamo defenders. I do. Those 180-some-odd men who knew they were going to die, knew they were going to die, knew their lives were sacrificed. When they had the opportunity to surrender, they didn't. When Santa Ana raised that pirate flag of no quarter, they knew their lives were done. But by the time that battle was over, one of Santa Ana's generals, he wrote in his diary, and he said, we can't stand to have another victory like that. We can't afford another victory like that. Because even in defeat, even in the martyrdom as their blood was shed and soaked into the dry dust of San Antonio in the Alamo walls, let me tell you something, the spirit of lie, spirit of Texas was alive and it grew and it grew and it's still here today. And you think God doesn't honor that sacrifice? He does. And God wants to lead us into a great future, folks, here in Texas. Let me tell you, if you looked at the map of the United States and it was a puzzle, and each state was a puzzle piece, and you took the state of Texas right there in the center at the bottom and you pulled it out, the entire thing falls apart. You lose Texas, you lose America. That's why America knows, this administration knows, they know that America needs Texas more than Texas needs America. We're great. We're blessed. We are blessed. Being able to provide 40% of the nation's oil, 26% of the nation's marketable natural gas, number two producer in the nation of lignite coal. But yet we want to keep apologizing for that which has made us great and made us wealthy because of the climate cultists and those who are wild-eyed leftist progressive lunatics. They want to tell us that we got to make ideologies into policies. Folks, that's enough of that. That's enough of that. We're not going to apologize and bow down at the altar of Mother Earth in the name of some false science 
We're not going to mask up. We're not going to mandate. We're not going to shut down. We're not going to executive order. We're not going to distance you. We're not going to lock you down. We're not going to tell you that you can't go to your, your daughter's wedding. You can't go to your grandmother's funeral. You can't go to the gym. You can't go to church. We're not going to tell you that. We're not going to put pretty women in masks. And by God, Texas women are way too pretty to be masking up. We're going to lower those property taxes immediately and put that thing on the path to zero. No property tax in the state of Texas. You say, it can't be done. can't be done. You're too busy. You, you've been too long depending on government mediocrity. You think you can't survive off the tit, but I promise you, patriot, you can. There's other ways to pay for the things you want and need. It doesn't have to be by making sure that somebody never owns their home and land. Let's stop with the immorality. Let's stop with it. We're going to shut that border down. Do you understand that U.S. Code, I'm sorry, U.S. Title 8, Code 1324, it says that it is illegal regarding illegal aliens. It is illegal to house, aid, or transport those who are illegally in this country. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're incentivizing them to be here. Our own law enforcement is taking them to these NGOs, these nonprofits like Catholic Charities, and they're giving them a bus pass to anywhere in the United States. They're giving them an airplane ticket anywhere in the United States, and they're gone. We got to get rid of those NGOs. We got to revoke the license of those 501c3s. We got to stop it. We got to deport those who are coming in here illegally. You want to come here? You migrate to this country legally. You immigrate to this country legally. You do it. You come in the front door. You don't come in the back door. We're not going to do that anymore. We're going to make sure those who are here illegally are stopped. We're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're done paying for them. We're done for them taking our rights. We got veterans sleeping on the street, and you got illegals ages 18 to 25 young year olds, young men who are sleeping in these hotels, sleeping in the man camps out there where the oil and gas industry should be operating. Do you understand that there was enough fentanyl brought across our border last year alone that was enough to kill 2.8 billion people on the planet? 2.8 billion people. That's a third of the population of planet Earth. That's how much was brought across our border. Not a single soul is coming across that border without the aid of the cartels. Day one, we name those cartels international terrorists. We do. We claim an invasion and we invoke Article 1, Section 10, Clause 3 of the Constitution. We invoke Article 4, Section 4 of the Constitution. We invoke Article 4, Section 7 of the Texas Constitution. We call up and equip and empower the State Guard to do the job because they're gonna federalize the National Guard. As soon as we send them down to the border, that's exactly what they're gonna do. But what we're gonna do in the meantime is we're gonna start doing a pact. We're gonna do a compact with the other states. The other states, we're gonna ask them to send their National Guard down too to join forces with us. We're gonna build a huge human wall immediately, immediately. In any state that doesn't want to cooperate, let me tell you, we can deport people down to Mexico or whatever country they came to, but we can also deport them to your state. You want them, California? You want them, California? You may as well financially, economically, and politically, bureaucratically already fallen off in the Pacific Ocean, California. You are done. You're lost. You're gone. Freedom is no more. Justin Trudeau is a perfect example of why you don't give power to weak men. Same goes with people like Gavin Newsom. Same goes with people like Beto O'Rourke. They're little dictators. They're weak men. It's not my fault you couldn't get laid in high school, buddy, but you don't have to bully people once you get a little bit of power. Folks, it's time for us to make a change, and I promise you, this, this Facebook ban that's going on out there, you can spread it. You can spread it far and wide. The idea that they're going to take a gubernatorial candidate just days away from an election and shut him down on a major platform, social media platform, over what? Over what? Because I told somebody to go look up FBI documents. That's why, in response to what they said, it wasn't even a post I made. Look, I'm abrasive. I'm politically incorrect. I got tongue-in-cheek humor that pisses some people off. And you know what? I can't tell you how much I don't care. I'm going to always be politically incorrect because I don't believe you can solve a complex problem with political correctness. I don't. Got to call things that are. There ain't no apologies to it. So there it is, folks. That's what I want to do. That's what I want to do, folks. I want to get government out of your life. Texas is not the Texas that most Texans think it is anymore. It's not. We lead in no category. So let's take it together. Folks, help me spread the word. Go get my messages off of Facebook. Go find my interview with Glenn Beck from last Thursday morning. It's pinned at the top of my Twitter feed. It's on my Telegram. It's in various places. It's on my Gitter. It's on my Parlor. It's on my Gab. Go get that interview. Share it far and wide. It's a powerful 17 minutes. Powerful 17 minutes. And I'm so thankful for Glenn Beck to give me that. And before I get off here, let me say, I got a, I got a very genuine phone call last night before my event from one of my opponents, uh, Don Huffines. 
Don called me on the phone and he said, I heard what happened with you on Facebook. He goes, if there's a message you need to get out, you feel free to use my platform. And I wanna say thank you uh, to him and his lovely wife. I heard from her today, she echoed the same sentiment. So to, to Don and Mary Catherine Huffines, God bless you. God bless the kids and the grandkids. And I'm thankful, this is the kind of race. This is, this is true class right here. This is Texas, folks. And we ran a classy campaign. We did. There was no mudslinging, finger pointing, or anything else. Because you know what? Don Huffines ain't the guy that shut me down. Greg Abbott was. That's who I was running against. I was running alongside Alan West and Don Huffines. But Don reached out to me and he offered that. It was a very generous offer, and I'm thankful for it. So God bless you, my brother. We're in this together. It's an anyone but Abbott thing. And I'll tell you, if Abbott wins in a primary, you have my word. I'll support Greg Abbott against Beto O'Rourke or Bobby O'Rourke, whatever the hell his name is. And I will say this, folks. I will say this as well. You proceed at your own caution because those on Facebook who are sharing my content are getting their accounts restricted. That's the other thing. My friend Cooper Wade just sent me a message earlier with a screenshot of his own, said he's restricted. His posts are gonna be restricted for, the, restricted for the next 25 days. Now, Cooper makes a living like I do in the world of entertainment, not being able to, uh, not being able to promote what you're doing as a self-employed person is, uh, it's career suicide, and uh, I, I've got a show Friday night, Greenville, Texas, at the Texan Theater. You can go to my website, watchchad.com, if you want to come. You get dinner, you get drinks, whole thing. It's an expensive ticket, but it's a limited seating thing, $150 a ticket, but we're going to have fun. But you know what? It's kind of hard to promote things like that when you're banned on Facebook, but you know what? The career's been set aside, folks. We're in a fight for Texas. You can visit me, prather2022.com. You can even go to Beto. 22.com and it'll come to me. <laughs> Prather2022.com. I love you getting on here. Thank you. God bless you. And uh, don't don't donate here. Donate to the campaign if you're going to donate. Prather2022.com. I love every one of you. I'm God bless you. Drink Robert Jones. Don't make fun of me. I'm drinking a Topo Chico. It was the only thing that was in the refrigerator. But cheers to you guys. Here's here's our here's our booster shot, folks. I gotta go get some real booze. Anyway, Sandra, I love you. Brian, I see you, boy. Tracy, I see you. And, uh, boy, it's moving quick. Kimberly, what's up? Oh, my gosh. Uh, moving quicker than I can see. Jason, Ezekiel, what's up? Jeffrey, what's happening? I'm going to jump off here. Emily Lawson, I see you, girl. Uh, Lee Prophet, what's happening? Matt Rogers. Colton Crottinger, I love you, buddy. You're my boy. You're my partner, pal. Annie, hey, girl. Wish I could see you that fast. But anyway, I'm going to jump off here. God bless you. Prather2022.com. Um, we got the new website coming out. Uh, Business-wise, coming out soon. It should be up and running. But folks, pray for me. That's what I need. And I'm praying for you. May God bless you. May God bless Texas. May God bless the Republic. May God bless our sovereignty. And may God have his will be done in this election as well as in Washington, D.C., and I'll not forget to pray for that situation there in Ukraine with the Russians in that situation, and uh, may God protect our men and women who are there. I love y'all. God bless you. This ain't Facebook, but I'll give you a YouTube poke, whatever that means. I can't even poke anybody, folks. I'm in Facebook jail, so here we go. If you missed this, go back and re uh, watch it again. I got pretty fired up. Now, here's the hard part. I never know how to get out of this thing, but I'm going to try. Just know that I love you. God bless you.